When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people from one another as shepherd and separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you are blessed by my Father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that I saw you hungry, and I gave you food? Or thirsty, and I gave you something to drink? And when was it I, we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? When was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it, one of least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. We went on two mission trips. We went on one, our, our high school trip with Bonham, Texas, and our middle school trip went to Belleville. And both were really great. And, uh, oh, wait. Can't hear me? Oh, my talk? That's bad. There we go. Is that better? All right. So we went on two mission trips this year. Our high school was to Bonham, and our middle school was to Belleville, Texas. And both were just really great. We built many ramps. We painted dozens of houses. We cleaned up yards. We cleaned up, uh, we built an air conditioner and a food pantry. We did all kinds of wonderful work, and it was awesome. And our kids are going to come up and tell you some about it. But one of the reasons we do mission trip every year is because we feel like that is a place where we can meet God. It's a place where we can serve God. And I love all of that. But as an adult, I also love other parts of my mission trip. And on both weeks, my job was I was a base camp adult, meaning I stayed where they slept and I got work ready for different parts of the camp while the kids went out and worked. And on the high school trip, I was the program coordinator, so that means I preached a lot. But on the middle school trip, I was the kitchen coordinator, so I mean, I cooked a lot. Uh, and one of the nice things on the middle school trip was from, it was from Belleville. And Belleville is about 20 minutes from Brenham. And Belleville maybe should be the mission trip we take every year. Because Belleville United Methodist Church has a member who works at Bluebell. Yay. And every day, this Bluebell church member would come in after work, bringing with him his little bag with a little brown cow on it, trotting in with another half gallon of ice cream for the base camp crew. Yeah. And while the kids were off working, we would sit and plan our day while eating Bluebell. <laughs> and he then brought extra Bluebell for our dinners in the evenings. And all together, it was just pretty great. <laughs> this morning at first service, when the kids found out I did that, because I didn't even know what to tell them, they were like, what? <laughs> yes. I snuck Bluebell and it was delightful. <laughs> we had a lot of fun on both trips. And so I'm going to first invite Kim to come up and we're going to talk about her experience on the high school trip. Come on, Kim. So, Kim, which trip did you go on? I went on Bob. Okay. And what did you accomplish that week? Um, we accomplished a lot of stuff. Uh, we uh, we helped two clients that uh, that whole week. So. And clients are the, uh, the people that we serve. We don't uh, let's, we're figure they are clients, so we serve them. What kind of stuff did you build and do? Um, we didn't really we didn't really well build kind of. Um, we took down a wall, and I was very pleased with that. Um, but we also put in an air conditioning unit for. Uh, one of my clients' name is Kim. Uh, but we put in a uh, air conditioning unit for her. Uh, it wasn't even her house; it was a food pantry. Um, so we put in an air conditioning unit for there. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and what? Uh, what was? You got to meet your client. What was that like? It was very emotional for all of us, my whole group. Um, and it was really cool because one of my clients, Mr. Jerry. Uh, and Miss Kim, they were really sweet people. Miss Kim, she, uh, I, I love Miss Kim to death because she not only wanted to help with the food pantry, she started the community. She uh, donated food to over a thousand members of the food pantry a month. But she also, uh, she didn't even want to like repair her home. She wanted to repair the food pantry, but she wanted to take down the walls so they had more room to store. 
for mm -hmm. the food pantry and they also wanted to put an air conditioning unit because one of the volunteers had fallen out uh, from heat exhaustion so she wanted to help them instead of helping herself and that I just looked that at her. Wow. So tell us how you see God that um, I saw God in a lot of different ways and uh, two ways that were the most like out there. I didn't say this one way this morning because I forgot about it and Sandra mentioned something. But um, first way is my team members, my group members, they were just all really welcoming and we just hit it off in the last like five minutes we met. And another way is Miss Kim. I mentioned her a lot, but she had uh, she had ended up having a stroke uh, five or six years ago. And the doctors gave her a good five years to live. She said, you're, you're probably going to pass away in the next five years because your heart's failing you. And she has overcome that obstacle, and she couldn't talk, she couldn't walk, but she uh, overcame that obstacle, and it's been seven years now since she had that stroke. Okay. So how did you see God and your teammates coming together? Help me understand that. So I saw God in them when we first met each other. We didn't really, we we were all really awkward with each other. We just looked at each other and was like, yeah, I really don't want to be here. I don't know you all. I don't. Yeah. I wanted to go back to my group. So we're like, all right. So we started talking. We all found out that we had something really good in common. Like we just wanted to help. We just wanted to do the greater good and help each other. Uh, get to help the clients. It was really fun when we came to the uh, site and got to bond with each other. And one of the uh, parts is we all kind of went around in a circle and rotated and kind of kept on cheering each other on. And uh, the guys and the girls all really cooperated with each other. And uh, one part of it is we had to take a little stump out of the wall and knock the wall down. We couldn't get it out. It took the girls 15 minutes on rotations to get it out of the wall. Wow. So, and why is it you love this trip? Maybe you want to go over here. I love mission trip because I get to look forward to meeting new people, meeting new clients, and just getting experience the thrill of just helping people and knowing that we help the community. And it was really cool because we had people, we found out that in Bonham we had people talking about us. Like it was just really emotional for all of them to find that out. And at Kleinet, it was just really emotional that we found out that we just changed our lives. Amen. Oh, Tina, which trip did you go on? Belleville. Belleville. Awesome. And you used to go on the Belleville Junior High trip. And what did y'all accomplish during your week? We accomplished like um, painting the whole house and um, putting a new porch in and then um, painting the walls. Cool. And you put that new porch in on the last day, right? Yes. That's awesome. And uh, what was it like? Did you get to meet your clients? Did you get to meet your family? Yes, we did. Did you get to meet your family? Yes, we did. Did you get to meet your family? Yes, we did. Did you get to meet your family? Yes, we did. Did you get to meet your family? Yes, we did. Did you get to meet your family? Yes, we did. Did you get to meet your family? Yes, we did. Did you get to meet your family? Yes, we did. Did you get to meet your family? Yes, we did. Did you get to meet your family? Yes, we did. Did you get to meet your family? Yes, we did. Did you get to meet your family? Yes, we did. Did you get to meet your family? Yes, we did. Did you get to meet your family yeah, okay. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, they were excited for all the cheering yeah. down. Yeah, that's awesome. And how did you see God back then? I saw God by like, everybody like, helping out each other when they needed help. Yeah. And I know you had a special circumstance that me. What was going on with you? I was in a wheelchair. Yeah. So Tina, about a week and a half, about a week before his mission trip, his mom calls me in a panic and says, Tina's hurt his ankle really bad. I don't know if we're going to go on the trip. And I assured her, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. So you came on the mission trip in a wheelchair. How did your team help you through that? By like helping me out. There's like some stuff I could do and some stuff I couldn't. Yeah. That's awesome. And how you talked about in our first service how you saw God through that. What was that like? Like like there's a whole bunch of people like helping me out, trying to do stuff and God was there. And like something I couldn't do but I could like figure out a way to to do it. Yeah, and God was encouraging you to push me to go further. That's awesome. And why do you like going on a mission trip every year? Because I get a Meeting people and talk about people. Awesome. Thank you, Tina. Uh, I've been on a mission trip almost every year since sixth grade. Uh, it's been a major part of my life. And, and I'm old, that's what you say. Yeah. So I've been going on a lot of mission trips. And it's been a great experience. Uh, but again and again, as you go through the years and go on these trips, a common story you hear coming back is the kids, when I ask them, how did you see God? Because I always want to ask them that question. And the answer is almost always, through my work team. And that sounds kind of something you just, oh yeah, that's neat, yeah, people are fun. Uh, and you say, of course you did, teenagers, they like to make friends. 
But I think there's something more going on there. Because when these groups, on our high school trip, we take, we make, on both trips, we come with lots of churches together. We met different Methodist churches and we go do work together. It's not just our church. But on the high school trips, we mix them all up. I mean, it's not just like the first Methodist church work group and then another work group. But all of them come together and we split all the kids up on different teams. So the first day, those kids don't know the kids they're in their work team with mostly. And it's always awkward that first Sunday night. Because they don't know who each other are. They're always like, uh, okay, I guess it's going to be with you. This is going to be weird. And it is awkward. But over the week, and all, sometimes it happens quickly and sometimes it takes a little longer. But over the week, that group comes together. And by the end of the week, the word you almost always hear is, this is my family. Because they've come that close. Sometimes we think, oh, that's neat. But I think there's a greater truth there. That often in our life, we set up labels and barriers. And we decide that people, these people are our friends or these people aren't our friends. Or this type of person is the people I hang with and this type of person isn't. The mission trip forces us to, to take away those labels. And it mixes them all up in the idea of serving a greater good, serving God. And in our world, we feel so separate, whether it's politics or all the other things in life that separate us. We're always defining ourselves and deciding who's, who is our, in our group and who is not in our group. These are the people I'm with and these are the people I'm not with. But in mission trip, that all that gets mixed up. And we see a greater truth that God is profoundly in that mixing up. That when you come together in the service of God, all of that other stuff you disagree with falls away. All that other stuff that may divide you, that may make you argue till you're red in the face, falls away. Because when you're on that work site, all that matters is the work. All that matters is the client and the person you're serving. And everything else just isn't that big of a deal. Because in the kingdom of God, we are called to serve. And that's what I always tell my kids. Mission trip isn't just a one week a year thing. It should be all year. We should take that spirit with us in our schools, in our families, in our communities. And that means we serve here, but it also means that we remember in our schools that those labels aren't as important. One of the most separated places I see is when I go into a school cafeteria. And kids are separated among groups and cliques and classes and races like crazy. But on a mission trip, that's all goes away. Different classes, different races, different cliques mix up, and they become a family. But as the story is, the only label that matters in our life is child of God. Amen. Amen. On a mission trip, we're reminded that all those other labels that we think are so important don't matter. Because you look on your left and your right on the work side and you realize these people are children of God. And you look at your client and you say, this person is a child of God. And that's all that matters. And in this moment, they need our help, but in the next moment, we might need their help. Because on mission trip, it's not about us serving them, it's about all of us serving together. And that's our call in life, friends. To focus on the mission. To focus on God's kingdom. Because when we focus on the mission, when we focus on serving God's kingdom and serving on the people next to us, serving the people on the left and the right of us, behind and in front of everyone, then we forget all the stuff we get so mad about. And we remember that God loves us. God loves us. God loves the people next to us. God loves the people we don't like. God loves the people that drive us crazy. We are all children of God. And so that's my hope for us, is that we can move into that ideal. That the labels that we think are so important aren't that important. And that call of mission trip, that we can see God and the people around us. We can see God in our service and see God in our mission. And God is profoundly moving through that. And for all of you that gave to make this possible, thank you. For all of you who are just hearing about this now, know that God is moving in Grand Prairie too. And God's not done with any of us yet. Amen. Amen.